Hi everybody, in today's episode we're going to be making this adorable little baby Groot from start to finish. So stick around. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is download the design from Thingiverse and I'll put a link uh, down below. Um, if you don't have a 3D printer, um, you can get on a website called 3dhubs.com, find a local uh, individual with a 3D printer and uh, tell them you want a baby group. And uh, it shouldn't cost a whole lot, uh, it's not very big, but uh, make sure you get it printed out of wood because we're going to be sanding it and polishing it and it's going to um, really look and feel like real wood. Okay, so once you've got it downloaded, the second step is to print both pieces. Okay, so when you print the baby group, uh, you've got two pieces. Um, the body and the head. Um, the head they recommend to print laying down like this so that the grain of the wood goes uh, the direction you'd expect but uh, because I'm planning on sanding it I'm not going to worry about the direction of the grain I wanted it all to match so I printed him standing up like this uh, which means I needed to, to use support uh, otherwise he probably would have toppled over so um, there's the head now the body, um, this came out really great. Uh, there's a lot of little bits and bobs to clean up. Uh, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, sanding this with some uh, some 150 grit uh, sandpaper, uh, and then I'm going to move down to uh, some 200 grit. From and then uh, from there I've got a little uh, fiberglass nick sander that I'm going to use to really get those details. So anytime you're sanding anything really, uh, there's sort of a process that you're probably familiar with of uh, starting with uh, really gritty sandpaper and knocking off the big, uh, you know, the big issues right away. Uh, and then you'll slowly move down to finer and finer sandpaper until you get all those details nice and smooth. Now this is printed from uh, a, a, a Hatchbox uh, Woodfill PLA. So it's PLA, but it contains about 40% wood uh, in the form of essentially a sawdust-like um, product, like a composite decking kind of thing. Um, and the end result is it really f looks and feels like real wood. Uh, once you get this stuff sanded, it sands just like wood. Um, I've got the I've got the major bumps removed, so I'm now going to move down to a uh, finer. Uh, this is a 150 grit uh, sandpaper, and uh, I'm going to start trying to get in here and get some of these little details. Now what I'm using is this wire brush, uh, and this is going to allow me to get in those crevices um, and dig out some of those layers uh, without taking out too much of the texture. Um, you got to be careful with the wire brush because you can really, uh, you know, do some damage real quickly. Uh, it's pretty abrasive, uh, but it, it, uh, it's not flat like a piece of sandpaper, so it's going to allow you to get in those, get in those little nooks. You can see that just creating a dusting of material in the air. Um, So 
that's allowing me to kind of smooth out these wood crevice areas. You want to make sure when you're using a wire brush in particular, make sure you go with the grain uh, because otherwise you're just going to cause more damage than you want to. Um, and this is going to kind of enhance and even strengthen the grain. These tiny files uh, that I'm going to use to uh, file out the inside of this neck so that the head will fit in here because uh, that it comes out of the printer it's a little rough and the model is designed with very little room for error so just want to get remove any nicks and burrs in there um, so this head will slide on easily Okay, I've now gotten uh, my baby Groot sanded pretty well. Uh, I'll give you some close-ups there. Um, just wanted to get the face nice and smooth, get these pads nice and smooth, the pads of the feet and this chest area. Um, didn't want to overdo it, didn't want to take out too much detail. Um, so now we're going to begin the process of painting. Um, a lot of stuff you probably start out with maybe a clear coat or something, but I want this to really have that really wooden feel. So I'm going to start out just with some uh, some brown uh, paint. So I'm going to go and get that mixed okay, up. Okay, now it turns out I don't have any brown paint, but I do have lots of other colors. Um, so in the interest of uh, saving money, I'm just going to start mixing some red and some green. recommend just using uh, acrylic paint uh, to paint your models with um, especially for PLA acrylic is really the best uh, the best type of paint to use uh, so I'm gonna mix all these together and try to get a shade of brown kind of streaky, you know, how it's got some some dark and some light and all that. And I'm just going to start brushing it on. Excess and let that natural wood show through. Uh, acrylic paint doesn't take long to dry at all, uh, half an hour or so, maybe. Uh, so now I'm going to get some more of uh, the really fine sandpaper. Some really fine sandpaper, and I start hitting just the top edges a little bit. Just take a little bit of the paint back off. Careful not to take too much back off, but uh, but I want to reveal I want to reveal some of that real natural wood underneath.
Okay, so now I've got the um, head and the body. Uh, I've done a coat of brown and uh, rubbed that in good, let it dry, and uh, done a light sanding to bring back out the natural wood uh, texture and color. So definitely at this stage looks like an old wooden baby group. Uh, so next, I'm going to start putting on a little bit of green, uh, kind of brighten them up a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm going to start off with some, uh, some green paint, obviously. Um, I'm going to add... Uh, I'm going to mix a little of... Well, no, that's already dry. I'm going to mix a little of it with uh, a little of this brown that was already here on my palette and uh, get kind of a greenish brown color going for the first layer. Um, and I'm just going to add a little bit of just a little touch of green foliage. I'm actually going to put down the brush and get a uh, get a sponge for this step because I want to just kind of lightly lightly sponge it on it's a really great <clears throat> great green group that I got going there but uh, what I'm going to do for the very final touch is I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow. Um, maybe a little bit of bright blue. And I want to make a nice, uh, nice bright green. Okay, I've allowed these parts to dry for about two hours or so uh, with acrylic paint. That's that's plenty of time. It's you know probably not fully cured, but it's pretty close. Um, so what I want to do now is just put on some finishing final touches. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit of um, fine sandpaper out, and I'm just going to scuff real lightly to expose a little bit of that mat. That's pretty good. Paint the eyes. Okay, for on these there. eyes, I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, really black trick. paint. So stay tuned. Just gonna need a tiny, tiny drop of it. That's way too much. Now you want to use your smallest brush you've got. This is actually a much bigger brush than I should be using, but it's the smallest one I've got. Um, so I'm gonna try to very delicately paint these eyes without getting any excess anywhere I don't want it. As you can see, the uh, eyes have dried nicely for about 45 minutes or so. And uh, it's time for the moment of truth. We're gonna put on the pupils. Uh, I got this paint marker. This is a Zig 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 uh, paint marker. Uh, trying to do these little tiny white dots with a uh, brush would just be really difficult. So I'm going to try to do them with a paint marker. Um, don't screw this up because you really only get one shot. So uh, here we go. A lot of the pictures that you see, there's sort of a second 
glare. Like his eyes are real shiny and glassy. So I'm going to add just a second tiny little dot on the uh, bottom left. <clears throat> so we'll let that dry and then it'll be time for the final uh, finishing. Okay, for the final finishing touch, uh, I'm going to show you a little trick, uh, ancient secret used by model makers and, and special effects artists for thousands of years. Not really. Um, shoe polish. So I've got my, uh, my shoe polish kit here. I'm going to find some nice dark shoe polish. Hopefully this isn't all dried out. I don't use it very often. So what you want to do is get some polish in your brush, as if you're going to polish your shoe. Uh, what you want to start doing is working that shoe polish into all the little nooks and crannies. Into those nooks. Hopefully you'll, you'll have a brush that isn't falling apart like this one. This is, blackened with the shoe polish. Now the next step, we're going to rub as much of it as we can back off. And all that's going to remain is that little tiny bit of nooks and crannies just to highlight those little details. Take this uh, electric shoe buffer and try to buff. Well, I buffed into a nice shine, that's for sure. Uh, the polish really didn't rub off, uh, rub back off as well as I thought it would, so I've ended up with a really dark brute. But that's okay. Uh, he still looks like he's made out of wood. And as an extra bonus, this uh, it's kind of shine him up a little bit. <laughs> he's, been, he's been polished. Uh, I'm going to wait to uh, treat the head until I know these eyes are dry. There's our finished Groot head. So I think at this point we can put the head on the body. It's pretty snug. I'm not, not sure if I'm ever going to be able to get it back off, so I waited till the end to do this. That's really snug. It's probably never coming back off. And there we have it, our baby Groot.